this year. I'll open the Venice book first because the Venice book has got that lovely kind of uh, delicacy, you know. Venice is a delicate place, really. It's very fragile, I think. As opposed to this incredible building in New York, the Chrysler building, which is steel and plastic and glass and fabulous. Okay, now, these boxes all have to be taken apart for it to be uh, finally presented, you know. T to me, that's a huge issue. It's very nice making a, a lovely book, but to finish the whole thing and make it enticing, so to speak, and make it a bit of a game, really. Um, so each slipcase comes apart. This one is extremely tight, and I'll show you what actually happens when you close it back up again. It's got to have that lovely kind of movement, you know? It's a performance per getter. All right, I'll, I'll take it off again now. So there we are, this gorgeous box in there. So I've, now, I've got now three slipcases left. Well, you know, this one, of course, then becomes really organic. It becomes what Venice is, paint and, and texture of, of gorgeous old weathering timbers and everything, everything happens there. Um, not that nothing happens in New York, but anyway, um, I, I took it on board to actually paint basically everything. The windows are even askew, you know, because the place is sinking, like Amsterdam. It's built on wooden pylons. So you already have a bit of an idea of what it could become. It is, of course, a tunnel book. And a tunnel book is simply an object that has basically one photograph which is cut at different sizes and levels to create a three-dimensional image inside. So imagine now coming down in here and looking down into that tunnel and seeing what's there. I'll expose it a little bit more. We have two holes. It's got symbolism everywhere. The ghetto, of course, was part of Venice, which was banned to everybody, and they were, the Jews were actually kept there for centuries. Not anymore. So what we now have is this tunnel book, which is now totally exposed. So come and enjoy that at some stage. This one became almost obsessive. Obsessive with the whole feeling of acrylic perspex, you know. The perspex to me is just one of the most amazing materials and it can be utilized in so many different ways. So again, look at the way this has been sculpted. And I want you to look at all the finishes on different things if you've ever been to the building, it's just fantastic being in the foyer. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just stay in the foyer. The paintings on the ceiling, the, the, the fittings, the brass, the, you know, the, the lighting, gorgeous. So anyway, this also almost weighs a ton because we're getting into slipcase number one and undoing it. Slipcase number one. Slipcase number two which fits a different way. And I had a bit of a problem with this. I thought, why should I go to that movement? It's difficult. Because most cases, for most ordinary people, automatically pull out this way because of the weight and everything else. No, I thought I'd continue on with this. Now, where do we go to from here? I had to improvise this and I really like it. I like it because it does that and it's got the colour of the ceiling and colour of the walls inside, from inside the building. And the inks that that's been coloured with were brought to my attention by the lovely Tabitha, who actually works with these inks a fair bit, you see. And I said, OK, let me play with those. I've been playing with them like crazy. They're, they're involved with everything, you know. They're involved on the finishes here you know, along the edges there. So, on and on it went. Now, I'm going to lay this down for the moment because it gets a bit hairy at this stage. 
I can actually tip it out. It might be better to tip it out. See what I mean? I'm left now with this particular little case. Light coming through. <laughs> and of course, the Chrysler building is set on a corner of two buildings, Le Lexington Avenue and um, so a mirror was important. I must also say it's still a work in progress. It's not quite finished. It still has other things to be built on it. But I'll set it up on this. And this, of course, would be easier to manipulate. Well, the plastic fits beautifully snugly over the top. You'll notice that beautiful sewing that Adele always works with, this concertina movement. I love sitting there making that, you know. It's just hours and hours of stitching and pushing and pulling just to get it, all the dynamics of it right. So I've got a closed window here. Then I've got an open window. And you can already see what's actually happening. It's part of the foyer. Now I'll expose the whole foyer. We've got a big glass window that we can look through. Now you can see... I'm running out of space here. 